What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be taking an early look at the all new Pine H64 Model B single board computer from Pine64. I do want to make this perfectly clear before I get started. This is not a review, this is an early look at the board. So there is some work that needs to be done on the software side, but I have been messing around with their Android image and it's been very stable. It actually works really well. Unfortunately, I couldn't get Google Play working, but we'll go over that in just a second. So the guys over at Ameridroid were kind enough to send this over. I do want to give them a big shout out and you can order one from them if you're a developer. I will leave links in the description if you're still interested in picking one up. Now there are two models of the Model B with different RAM sizes. So they offer a two gigabyte and a three gigabyte model. The two gigabyte is 38.95 and I believe the three gigabyte is 45.95. I could be a little off on those numbers, but it's right there in that ballpark. So in this video, I'm going to be doing a hardware overview and I'm also going to test out their Android image. Like I mentioned, it's very early, so it's only going to get better over time. The guys over at RMBN have also gotten their hands on this board and as of making this video, there is a nightly build available. I'll leave links for that in the description. I haven't yet tested it because there are some things that aren't working with this board in RMBN. So I'm going to be testing out Pine's Android Nougat build. I also received a few extras from Ameridroid, like their plastic case. They do offer an aluminum version that looks really nice, an EMMC module, and a heatsink for the Pine H64 Model B. One thing a lot of these newer single board computers are doing is replacing the old micro USB with either a USB Type-C or a barrel jack. Now, I personally prefer the barrel jack. We can put a lot of power through here. USB Type-C is also great, but it will cost them more money to implement that. I'll be using a three amp, five volt power supply for this single board computer. Specs on the H64 Model B are very similar to the new Orange Pi 3. For the CPU, we have the all winner H6. This is a quad core Cortex A53 at 1.8 gigahertz, and it is a 64 bit system. For the GPU, we get the Mali T720 MP2 at 600 megahertz. Now this isn't a top of the line GPU, it's actually an older generation, but it should get the job done with a lot of different projects and it does 4K video pretty well. As for RAM, there's two models, two gigabytes or three gigabytes. I was a little confused when I first saw this because usually it's either one, two or four gigabytes of RAM. They offer a three gigabyte model, which should be plenty for tons of projects. And I believe this was done to keep the price down on the board. Both variants contain LP DDR3. For storage, you can use an EMMC module. There is a socket present, and this will net you much better speeds than a micro SD. But it also contains a micro SD card slot, just in case you don't want to fork out the extra cash for an EMMC. One USB 3.0 port, two USB 2.0 ports, HDMI 2.0 for 4K 60 out, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, 40 pin GPIO header, just like on the Raspberry Pi 2 or 3, gigabit ethernet, Bluetooth 4.0, RTC battery connector, power and reset buttons. It also has built-in Wi-Fi, and yet again, I believe they did this to keep the cost down. It's only 802.11 BGN, 2.4 gigahertz. You can't get AC or 5 gigahertz on this. Little disappointing, but it does contain gigabit ethernet, which should have plenty of speed for you. There are a few other little odds and ends on this board, but 99.9% .9 of people buying these aren't going to utilize those. I will leave links to Pine's website so you can check out the full specs. As for the operating system, RMBN has a nightly, there's an Android Nougat build, and more Linux distros are on the way. So there are a lot in the works right now, but as of making this video, I'm going to be testing Android only. And by the way, it's the same exact form factor as the Rock 64 board from Pine. So if you have any cases or modified anything to fit the Rock 64, the Pine H64 Model B will fit. All right, so here we are at the main interface. I actually like using it this way. It's very Android TV-esque. I know some people are going to want, you know, stock Android, but I think this works well on a big screen. There are a few useful apps pre-installed, but you're definitely going to want to sideload some stuff. Unfortunately, I can't get Google Play working on this build. It is installed, but it keeps crashing on me. I did try to update to the latest version with no luck at all. I am using a third party app store called Aptoid, but unfortunately I can't get any of the games that I installed to actually launch correctly. I've tried PUBG, Asphalt 8, Asphalt 9, Minecraft, and a few others. I keep getting black screens or booted back out of it. So we definitely need a better version of Android, before we get to gaming on this thing. I'm gonna start up ID64 and just take a look at the specs and make sure everything's correct. 
You might notice that the model is named Molly. Now that's the same as some of the Amazon Fire tablets, specifically the Amazon Fire 8. Now while this does have a better CPU in it, this is an all winter 1.8 gigahertz CPU, the Amazon Fire 8 still has the same GPU. So gaming performance is gonna be really close and a lot of these GPU benchmarks are gonna be dead on with the Amazon Fire 8. This does have a higher clock CPU, but a lot of the Android games are really reliant on the GPU. So you're gonna get about the same performance. Speaking of benchmarks, the first one I ran was Geekbench 4. Now I did test this passively cooled and I also placed a fan on it just to see how the performance would increase and it wasn't by much at all. So without a fan, single core was 688, multi-core was 1751. Now this is very close to the Amazon Fire 8 HD tablet I recently reviewed with a single core of 614, multi-core of 1616. Now that extra clock on the CPU is definitely helping out, but it's not a super significant jump in performance. Now with the fan, I scored a little better here. Single core 680, multi-core 1828, still on the very low end of the spectrum when it comes to Android phones and tablets. The next benchmark I ran was 3D Mark. Now this is very GPU intensive. For Slingshot, we scored a 114. For Ice Storm Extreme, we scored a 4,328. Now this is pretty much dead on with the Amazon Fire 8 HD. All of these devices are on the very low end of low end Android devices. Since this Pine board has a USB 3.0 port, I figured some people might want to use this as a server of some sort. So I wanted to test internal and external storage speeds. For my external storage, I'm using a USB 3.0 Western Digital 2TB drive. And remember, I'm using an eMMC module instead of a micro SD card. It's going to be much faster than a micro SD. So on the eMMC, internal sequential read was 139 megabytes. These are all in megabytes, not megabits. Random read, 9.47. Internal sequential write, 45. Internal random write, 8.72. As for external drive speeds, yours will differ depending on what kind of drive you're using, but they look pretty decent for USB 3.0 on a small single board computer. Sequential read was 90, random read was 9, sequential write was 29, random write was 7. So if you want to serve some video files from here, it could definitely work pretty well. Up next, internet speed test, download and upload. So like I mentioned in the beginning, this does not support AC Wi-Fi, so we're not gonna get a hold of that five gigahertz network. We can only use 2.4. Download is in megabits per second, 48.9 on Wi-Fi, that's download. Upload, 23.3. So it's not bad for the old 2.4 gigahertz standard. I would have loved to spend a couple extra bucks on the board itself for five gigahertz or AC, but unfortunately, they don't offer it. As for Ethernet, it's a whole nother story. Ethernet's always going to be faster. Now my home internet is rated at 400 megabits per second down and 20 up. So running over Ethernet, I was able to get 482 megabits down and 23.7 up. And this isn't a fluke or anything. I ran this several times, five or six times. And I also tested a couple other apps just to make sure. I was actually able to outperform my advertised speed by quite a bit on the download. Now upload was a little different story but it's still very, very good for a single board computer using a wired connection. The next thing I wanted to test was native 4K video playback. Now, all of these new single board computers coming out tout 4K 60 FPS playback, but you gotta keep an eye on the codec because some of them are not supported. I'm gonna start here with a 1080p file just because I know a lot of people are still on 1080p TVs. This board is gonna do 720 and 1080p perfectly. There's a few built-in video playback apps, and I've kind of narrowed it down to the best one here. I did test this with Kodi, and performance is really bad right now. It's just not optimized for this chipset. But using the built-in video player, you shouldn't have any trouble at all doing 720p or 1080p natively. And I'm using that Western Digital USB 3.0 2 terabyte drive here. But what about 4K video playback? It will do it, but I'm gonna tell you, if you have a nice 4K television, chances are you might be able to splurge a little more and grab an Nvidia Shield Android TV. Don't buy a cheap single board computer and expect to run every codec at 60 FPS 4K. This is my go-to video test here. This is Big Buck Bunny, 4K UHD 30 FPS MP4. 
Handles it fine at 30 FPS with the built-in video player. I don't notice any stuttering whatsoever, and I've tested this on dozens and dozens of boards and tons of different hardware. Let's go for the 60 FPS version. Same exact video, we just upped the frame rate to 60 FPS. This is still MP4. Right off the bat, you can see the stuttering. Now I've had tons of trouble with this same video file on ARM devices. Best one I've ever tested it on is the Nvidia Shield Android TV, but this doesn't mean that there aren't single board computers out there that will run this at full speed. It just means that a lot of them won't. If you look over here while it's moving out of frame, you can see it kind of stuttering a little bit as it's going forward. I'm going to test a couple more files here. This is the Jellyfish Bitrate Test, 120 megabits per second, 4K, UHD, HEVC, 10bit.mkv. This is a good mid-range test, 120 megabits per second, looks really smooth here, we're not getting any stuttering, and it's handling this file just fine. Let's step it up one more notch. This is 200 megabits per second, 4K, UHD, 10-bit, HEVC, MKV. So overall, out of all the boards I've tested, this little tiny H6 actually handles 4K video than some of the more expensive single board computers that I've tested like the RK3399. There have been a couple updates in the last few months for the RK3399 that enabled better 4K video playback, but I gotta say this H6 is definitely holding its own. And with more software and kernel optimizations, this could get better as long as Pine does what they need to do. Unfortunately, that's about it for this video. Due to software limitations right now, there's not much more that I can test with this thing, but as soon as new software is available, I will be doing another video. Most Android games are going to perform about the same as the Amazon Fire HD tablet. Now, they have the same GPU. I understand that this does have a higher clocked CPU, but I don't think it's going to make much of a difference in Android gaming. As for emulation, this will perform a bit better than the Amazon Fire 8 HD, but don't expect to run every N64, PSP, and Dreamcast game at full speed. In my opinion, this isn't a great emulation board. And as soon as an RBN image is released, at least for testing, I will be doing a video on that, and I can't wait to test it on the Orange Pi 3 also. Android is great, but there are tons of Android boxes that are going to perform very similar to this for cheaper. Plus, you get the remote, power supply, and everything you need with those little boxes all in one package. Truthfully, this isn't a big step up from other offerings from Pine around the same price. I really don't know why all of these single board manufacturers are running to the H6 CPU. In my opinion, it's not a giant step up even from the S905. Yes, 4K video playback is possible on here. And it will perform better than the S905, but like I mentioned, if you're looking for a good 4K video playback device, grab an NVIDIA Shield Android TV. If you already have a $1,000 4K television, you might as well spend a little extra to get the best bang for your buck. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to check the description for links if you're interested in something like this. And like always, thanks for watching.